Welcome back to Foxy TV, episode 92. We're closing in on the end of the year and this will be our second last episode before we take off on holidays. And this episode is one you may want to rewatch a few times and maybe take some notes as Jake is going to take us through the numbers that we track as a home staging business and why we think it's important that uh, you stay on top of these metrics. So if you're here purely for the numbers and the metrics, maybe skip for just a few minutes. Uh, for everybody else, I'm going to show you two quick installs. So the first install today, where was that? That was a big, nice partial in Carindale. Yeah, Eva uh, took the phone out and, and yep. filmed you a bit. Did you anything in particular that was, I don't know, challenging or different about this one? Um, not too crazy. The challenging thing was the heat. Mm. <laughs> yes, 35 degrees. We were relying on airflow that there was none. Um, there was a couple of things um, with, it was a partial and with partials always sometimes can come challenges. So we thought some stuff was moved before we got on site and then it wasn't. But that stuff happens and um, we just have to be flexible. We moved into the garage and we'll head there later this week to take it to storage for them. Yeah. So they were super understanding with that and so other than that, it turned out really beautiful. We smashed it out though. Two and a half hours for a full bedroom partial in Carindale, so thanks to my sidekick Eva. <laughs> Can Eva, you made a friend there? Yes, a doggy. Oh, I thought you were talking about the spider. Oh, yeah, there was a spider as well. Really cool. He was not my friend. No, we were not friends. Let's now take a look at another install, this time a partial install in Maruka. This morning, we are in Maruka uh, to style this property. All right. Morning, Ken. Hey, guys. How's it going? I'm here. What are we doing here, Thieves? We're doing a partial install. Where are we? We're in Maruka. I just kept walking to you then. Oh, uh, yeah, we're in Maruka doing a partial install. I'll probably just getting photos done this time. Okay, that will do for the installs for now. Uh, if you do like to follow along on the styling side of things, make sure to keep up with our Instagram and Facebook as Phoebe does post photos there from time to time. It is now time for today's main topic, home staging metrics, what to track. Over to you, Jake. So I guess my title here is officially, unofficially the numbers guy. Um, I'm a bit obsessed with the financial side of things. Uh, I've got a lot of spreadsheets that are probably a little bit unnecessary, but we track a lot of things because we find it, or I find it interesting, um, but also very useful for, from a business point of view. So I've got a list of things here, um, numbers, metrics, um, KPIs that we track and measure, and I'm gonna kind of go through some of them in a little bit more detail and some I'm just gonna touch on. And I think these are important for not all of them will be important to every home staging business, um, but I think some will be important to us specifically because of the way that we set ourselves up, um, but I'm gonna go through them anyway, and it's the sort of thing where um, I'm sure there'll be things that other people track that we don't, and, and I think it's just an interesting conversation to look at what, as a business, you find important to, to measure. I guess we'd call it kind of a business growth set of numbers, um, and these ones are things that we track internally that help us understand or, or keep an eye on how we're growing as a business. Um, we can set targets and kind of measure that, our actuals versus targets as we go. And we have this, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but we kind of have this metrics board, which I update once a week, which helps our team know what's important to us and how we're kind of measuring. So a couple of these, these things I wanted to highlight, um, and these numbers are probably a little out of date, but they're because we're midweek, but things like number of houses out, we wanna know at any point in time how many houses we have out. Um, we wanna know how many installs we've done in the last two weeks. They're probably the, the two main ones. We also track our targeted installs on a weekly, monthly and annual basis and actuals as we're going um, and some other little things, but those are probably the three I wanted to highlight. And so that it kind of lets us track how we're 
for growing as a business, but also lets us celebrate, I guess, when we have little wins, little records. Um, you know, we have a, a new record number of houses out at any one point in time. We try and do a brekkie or something like that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just good to know how your business is tracking from those points, that point of view. Um, the next kind of little category I'm not going to spend much time on because it's something that everybody understands to some degree and knows, and that's the financial side. So things like revenue, monthly revenue, annual revenue, um, but I guess more importantly, profit and profit margin. So we, obviously everybody tracks that as part of their bookkeeping and accounting, but I think it's important to understand as part of understanding a profit margin, what are your big expense categories and how they are tracking over time compared to say, or as a percentage of revenue. So understanding your, if you've got a team, your wages as a percentage of revenue, your warehousing costs. Um, for us in the early period, it was a bit real focus on furniture hire and what that cost was, because we were hiring some pieces as we were building our own inventory, um, but our target was to get that lower and lower as we own more and more of our own stock. So the financial side, there'll be other kind of categories or other um, items within that, but I'm gonna leave that because I, I want to kind of move on to the next one, which is uh, maybe a little more interesting. And this is some of our staging related uh, metrics and numbers that we track. And well, I'm, I'm calling it staging related. And to give you some examples, the first one I had here was the actual result from a sales point of view. So at the end of the day, we know that we're here to sell homes or help sell homes. So we track every install that we do, every property that we um, stage, we track what actually happens from a sales point of view on that. So we want to know at collection time, did it have a contract? Was it unconditional? Uh, if not, did it sell in the, the weeks um, after that? Did it not sell at all? All of those things, we make sure we record the result. Um, and I think it, as an example, I wanted to give a couple of examples of why some of these are important. Um, and this one, this one's important because if we know things like, we know that 80, around 87% of our properties or the properties that we've staged have sold by the six month mark. Um, and we also know that percentage at the six week mark when we collect and a few other points. But if we know at six weeks we, hit, we have 87% success rate, that's a sort of um, number or thing that we can bring up in our conversations with new potential agents, with um, you know, in consultations with clients, and it gives comfort and, and a little bit of proof, at least from our point of view, of the success or the impact that staging can have. Um, the, I guess, average duration in terms of how long a property or our styling is in a property as well is important for that same reason, but also internally we then know how quickly we can turn furniture around on average. Um, we know that, for instance, at the moment around 50% of our properties are packed up before the six week mark. So before we would normally have a, our high period kind of ending, we already know that we're packing them up early because there, they've had a successful sale. Um, so the example I wanted to use here was that we've recently, or earlier this year, moved to an eight week high period, um, as a lot of people did on a temporary basis, we've kind of made it more permanent. And the reason that we've done that and been confident in that is that we know that 50% or more of our properties don't even reach the six week mark. Um, so they're not even needing that eight week, but it gives the confidence up front to a lot of clients that if it doesn't sell immediately, they actually have that extra period of time. So we can make decisions like that because we know our numbers and we know that it's actually gonna not have as big an impact on us as you might otherwise think. Some other staging related ones, we like to track our agent stats. So we record who the agent is for each of our staging jobs. Um, we record the sales result on an agent basis. So we know for each agent what the results are and for some it's better than others. And we, we, we know that and we share that information with, with some of those agents. Um, it helps obviously with our conversations with, with particular agents or also with clients who are discussing um, agent or potential agents from their point of view, if they haven't made a decision on who's gonna list their property for them, we can have conversations about the results that we're seeing. Um, and obviously from a business point of view, it lets us know who's, which relationships are really de delivering um, value to us. And speaking about agents as well, another one that I had here was when you're recording all of that, every new job, we like to know what percent is a repeat agent versus a new agent. And that obviously helps us know, I mean, it's kind of a balancing act. We want new agents coming on board because that means we're expanding our relationships and we're building um, kind of our impact more broadly as a business. But also we want agents to be returning and using us over and over again because it means that we're delivering on, on our value and doing a good job. So knowing that percent um, or knowing those numbers kind of helps us understand that. 
They're probably the main ones that I had. I know that there's other things people will, will measure um, and if there are others that people find really useful, I'd actually be interested to have that conversation and, and understand them. But kind of moving on to a cut, I've got a couple more that are in different categories. One of them, again, is, is probably obvious, but just from an inventory point of view, I wanted to mention when you own your own stock and furniture, um, it's important, or at least for us, we've, we want to track what furniture we have available at any point in time from a um, selection point of view. But it also, when we're tracking you know, how long furniture is out, what furniture is in what property, how quickly we can get furniture back out into properties, it helps us understand what the efficiency of our assets are and when we potentially need to buy more of a certain category. Um, it also helps us understand our pricing to know what's the actual payback of a, you know, we go and buy a sofa, how many jobs does it have to get used in before it pays itself off? Um, so they're important numbers to know if you either own your own stock or are building an inventory of your own. Last one that I wanted to mention is one that we actually don't track, but potentially should, probably should um, have in the past, but it, it fell away from us a little bit. And that is um, what conversion, what number of uh, our quotes that we put out actually convert to um, paying in stores. So, you know, we go to a lot of consultations, send a lot of quotes out, not all of them go ahead. Um, as I said, in the past, we used to actually measure or track what percentage um, success rate we had. And I know that others do that still, and, and it's probably one that I want to do, but it just, let's say, got away from this. But I think that's a useful one to know how good you are or how well you're performing from a consultation point of view. Um, and also maybe from a pricing point of view, how um, you, I guess, are you sitting where you need to to make sure that you're winning the work that you need to. So all of our numbers that we track are in various spreadsheets that I've built myself. Um, some are more complicated than others. Some are very simple, but they're, you know, we, we have a database for all of our installs, for instance, all of our jobs that we track, you know, install dates, pack up dates, pricing, um, furniture hire costs, if there are any um, days out, with who the agent was, sales results, all of those numbers are all in one kind of database. Um, we have an inventory management uh, tool that we've used and which we've shared in the past. Um, and there's a video on that, maybe we can put a link somewhere, but if people want that, we, we did share that and, and happy to. Um, yeah, Excel. Basically, it's it's pretty pretty simple from our point of view, and it helps that I have a an interest and a bit of an Excel nerd. Um, so the final one that I wanted to mention, and this is probably one of the more important ones for us. Um, I've left it till the end, maybe because it's not a a normal metric as such or some a KPI necessarily. But we everything for us revolves, or our day to day operation revolves around our truck schedule, um, which is you know truck can only be in so many places and during a day, uh, so we can only fit so much in. And we've got it down to a fine art. We know very well from a benchmarking point of view how long any particular activity, whether it's an install, whether it's a pack up, whether it's just loading the truck, um, whether it's the travel times, like we, we need to know all of that in a lot of detail or, or very specifically, um, we measure it down to the 15 minute marks. So we have these whiteboards and we've got these magnetic strips. And what I kind of wanted to show, to, to give an example is we've got all these little magnetic strips that we've cut to a specific size and they're like measured very accurately. We've got 30 minutes, 45, 60 minutes. And the way that we do it is, here's an example of, of a day where we know how long a particular thing is gonna take, how long our travel is, and we build our whole day out like this. So we know at any point in time where we should be. Um, and throughout the day, we make sure we're measuring where we are compared to the schedule. Um, and considering, uh, or the reason this is so important and the reason I wanted to bring it up for us um, from a numbers and measurement point of view and benchmarking is because we've built our reputation around being very flexible, being fast and efficient. Um, and the only reason we can do that and do it with the team that we've got is because we're so, um, I guess, I don't know what the word is, but we, we focus a lot on the schedule and how accurate we are with our time management. So um, that's our very rudimentary system, but it, it works for us and I, I think that's an important one to, to highlight. Well, what we do is we do an estimate of height at any point. <laughs> it gets a little out of hand. We are due a tip run, but uh, it's, a, it's a good sign that we're updating stock and getting new stuff in. As Jake mentioned, he would love to hear what numbers you guys are tracking out there. Uh, so let us know in the comments section uh, wherever you're watching this video. That's it for Foxy TV episode 92. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great week and we'll see you back here for the last episode of the year.